Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're checking out the QNAP TS873A. Now this is an 8-bay NAS, you know, for storing serious media, 8-bays. And we are actually currently using the TVS 872. And this guy is a beast. It works really, really well. It's really solid. There are a few quirks here and there, but generally it is Mm, good, great performance. I'm loving it. Also got the extended warranty because sometimes bad stuff happens and if your warranty is out, who's going to repair it? You need to just get the extended warranty. I totally recommend it. But this TS873, it's pretty much half the price of the big beast. Now, the reason why is it has a couple of missing features. For example, it doesn't have 10 GB built in, doesn't have fundable free. Don't really need that if you don't need that speed. I mean, it has 2.5 GB, so uh, that's pretty good generally. But in this video, I'm also going to be upgrading it to 10 GBE because I want to do some performance testing. I want to see if the CPU of the big beast makes a difference. Primarily, I'm using the TS873 as a backup drive, so that is why I'm switching over. And you know, the AMD processor has got Ryzen in there, should be fast. Obviously, it's not as fast as the i5 inside this guy but it consumes less power. So I want to just see, you know, if this guy can actually turn up the heat. I can get up to a thousand megabytes a second reading with this bad boy. Can I get a thousand also on this guy? If I can, if I can, can that'd, be, that'd be amazing. That'd be really, really nice to see. So I figured I'd check it out. Other features you don't get with this guy is it doesn't have a graphics card. So if you do maybe Plex and you're in clothing with that kind of stuff, you're not going to be getting that support. A lot of people love the Intel processors because they use the GPU with that sort of situation. But for this as a backup drive, maybe I don't need it whatsoever. But let's go ahead and let's uh, check it out in person. Side, you get a beautiful welcome to QNAP. Probably value a lot of stuff. And inside is the beast. Now, I love NAS computers, systems. Very, very hard to unbox. So I'm just going to turn around. I love NAS computer systems because I still get chills remembering my first NAS. It was Synology DS. Eight, and I loved it. My first actually was a four, 416 play and it was horrendous. I loved the idea of it. Then I got the eight bay one. I loved it, but I also hated it because it was so slow. Now I could have actually gone for Synology this time around because they finally have some decent processors in their systems. In fact, the Synology, I think the DS something 21, 1821, something like that. It has the same processor as this guy. However, and it's also also a little bit cheaper. A couple of things I didn't like about it. One, it's only one GBE ports. And two, it's kind of political. Synology last year started all of a sudden requiring the use of their own hard drives because they started manufacturing or at least selling their own branded hard drives. And they required the use of their hard drives in their enterprise systems. Now, this is enterprise systems. It's not their, you know, lower lower grade systems. However, you can imagine that one day they can flip the switch and saying in future software updates, we may not support it. So I just didn't like the whole politics around them releasing their drives and forcing their users to use their drives. Just look at this nice little beast kind of form factor that I love. Eight bays. It doesn't have a screen like my other drive. So you're going to have to be using an app like Discovery and all that stuff. We'll go for it when we go to the computer and have to access it via the IP. And it is just like a, a normal computer. We're going to open it up. The screws around the back here and you get access to the motherboard and you can add in the SSD. You can add in PCIe. It's just a nice general system. It's got lots of ports there. So two, two Ethernet ports right there, USB around the back and also USB-C. And on the front here, eight whole bays and you just open them up like that. Now there is a difference here as well. This doesn't have a locking mechanism. So the more, the more expensive one, you can actually lock the drives in, but it just pops in and out. So that's kind of nice. So what am I going to do first? I think the first thing I want to do is, and I've never done this before, so I'm actually excited to be doing this. I'm just going to plug this in and see if you can actually use it without putting a hard drive in. Pretty sure you can't, but I want to find out. One more thing, you do get this supplementary box. It has heat sinks if you're doing SSD kind of like stuff. It's got a key, a locking key, if you want to lock it into position. And it has lots of little screws. And you do get the, the slowest cat 
5e cable don't use this cable it's gonna make everything slow get a cat 6 cable and that'll be good all right so it's actually been a few weeks since my unboxing video because i noticed a strange sound coming from the power supply so i hit up support and i requested a replacement unit it sounded a bit weird for a new device so i got a replacement now it's turned on i heard the beep so i'm using an app here on mac called discovery just to find out the IP address that's been allocated. So discovery, you can see right here, it is a new device called NAS7A and the IP address is 192.168.1.232. So I'll type that in and you do get a login screen. However, so choice of operating systems, you get QTS Hero. I haven't tried that in my life. Apparently that one's meant to be more memory intensive, but more efficient because it does deduplication and stuff like that, which means it stores a lot of the stuff in the memory. I'm going to go by default smart installation right there. I'm just going to use the basic current version of the app. I'm going to check for update. You can also install the latest one. That's pretty cool. I tend to have my NAS drives not connected to the internet where possible because that's where you can get hacked and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to install the vanilla one and do an update later on. So hard drive missing, you have to put a hard drive in. So let's go ahead, stick a hard drive in and install the operating system. So I've got four Iron Wolf Pro drives fresh from Amazon. And these are the 16 terabyte versions. There's a great deal on them. So I'll stick them in one by one, pretty much like this. You get this side tags, pop them out. And you want to stick the drive with the SATA port around the back. And then plug the tabs back on and that's it you can put the drive back in one note if you are getting new drives i always keep the static bag and the box because it has a five-year warranty the wine wolf pros and you probably might need it and they always ask you to send the warranty the the drive that needs fixing in uh, one of these bags so useful if you can keep the box or at least keep the bag so i've got the hard drive plugged in now skip it should detect the hard drive and it should start installing the drive. You get to ask a name for your drive and this will be the name that will appear on your shared folders. So use a really long password for your admin and you'll probably end up disabling the main admin and using a second admin account just to make it harder for hackers to find it. But if you're of course not on the internet, you're a bit safer. Well, a lot safer because you need to have physical access in that case unless they manage to attack the NAS by proxy or one of your other computers. But generally, yeah, use a really long password. I like using the same time as the computer, less synchronization with the internet, the better. And IAP automatically DHCP. And by default, you get to ask your ask if you want to enable Windows SMB or Mac AFP, and they're both enabled by default. So why do since AFP is now kind of pretty much obsolete, I just have everything running through SMB. Yep, looks good. Apply, initialize, initialize. And it's going to go ahead, install the operating system. And then I guess I'll install all the other drives, set up a RAID, and uh, also set up 10 GBE and do a side by side comparison. If uh, obviously 1 GBE is going to be a lot slower, but we'll see how much faster 10 GBE is. And then we'll see how it compares with my big beast, the 872 XT. All right, so that's it. It's set up. Go to NAS management and boom. No, oh, if you do try and log in with HTTPS, you on, in Google or Mac for some reason, you have to type in this is unsafe to allow it to go into the login screen. So if you get stuck there, just use that feature. And once you're in, you're pretty much raring to go. So what I suggest you do is check out my full setup guide video to walk you through all of these steps and set things up. But for now, I'm going to jump into the performance section of this bad boy. So to get started quickly, I'm just going to create a new volume. So what you want to do is you want to set up a new volume, not storage pool. So don't click this button here. Click on volume and you get to choose which uh, volume you want. You get a thin volume, a thick volume or a static volume. So I always choose static because that's the fastest one to go. It lives right on top of the RAID, as you can see. This one has a storage pool, and then uh, this one also has a storage pool. But if you live right on top of the RAID, one, it's uh, easier to restore the RAID if it ever gets damaged. Potentially, we'll find out. Uh, hopefully, I'll never find out. But there's more tools to tackle RAIDs specifically rather than storage pools built on RAIDs. And two, it's slightly faster. So static volumes have the best performance, 20% faster than thick. 
So I'm just going to fix this one and it will go ahead and create the volume and shared folder so you can access it remotely. All right. All right. We're about to do our first speed test and we're hitting play. Boom. 101 megabytes a second. That's going to take forever. So let's just make it one gigabyte stress test and 9,900 megabytes per second. All right, so we're pretty much maxing out the bandwidth on the one GBE connection that I've got at the moment. So there's a couple of ways to turn this guy off. Click on the, the username on the top right and click shut down, or you can just go straight to the device itself, hold down the power button, and it will start shutting down itself because we are gonna be opening the bad boy up and we're gonna be installing one of these 10 GBE cards to see how fast we can go on this drive. All right, so in order to open up this bad boy, there's three main screws over here. Just using a standard Phillips head screwdriver. Keep these screws to the side and pull this out. You pull and open up wide and lift up. Inside here is the PCI slots. There you go. And you just need to get rid of the screw from the side here. This kit over here. It's beautiful actually. If you find the fans annoying, you can always unplug it, but it doesn't seem to make any noise for me. Pretty much just plugs in just like that. So you can see you got a split between the connectors and a split between the connectors here and then shove it in so it fits. And to avoid it being wobbly, just reapply the screw. Now, in case you're wondering, this is where the CPU provides. And if you do want to upgrade the RAM, there's a second slot just right there for it. And if you want to double upgrade it, remove the existing RAM from, from there. It, by default, uses Kingston memory. Now, this is non-EEC. And uh, probably EC's error correcting is probably the way to go if you're serious, but out of the box, it's all right. You do also get an M.2 expansion slot over here as well. Let's plug it back together. Slots in. Push it forward, push it forward, locked in, that's it. All right, so now this speed test, if we run it, we're getting 300 to 400 megabytes a second writing and reading. Boom, 1000, we've saturated the speed. All right, guys, so as you can see, it's been a few months and the A7 III is still sitting right there in the corner. I need to find a permanent place for it. Anyway, I got it set up on, as a RAID 5 and it's still pulling a thousand megabytes a second read. So I'm happy with that, especially I'm just using this backup drive. Imagine if I put an M.2 SSD in there. I could probably use it for production. So I'm very happy. Half the price of the 872 XT. And uh, it's uh, pretty much most of the features that you need. Let me know what NAS drive you guys are using out there in the world. And hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.